I but hear, are you saying that the polls have got it wrong? Because it's a, I think it's a reputable have. polling company. I, I, I'm not challenging the polling company. What I'm saying is I think they got it wrong in, in the sense that when I talk to people on the ground and I listen to people talking, because it's always important to listen and observe what's going on around you. Yes, we, we, we're looking at um, obviously four tribes in an old native title, but one of the tribes have more... Uh, sufficient evidence dating back to occupation, connecting them to that area. Whereas the other tribes, they don't have that sort of, um, you know, proof. They don't have the burden of proof to mm. show that they they are from that land. It's only because the, the system of native title, through multiple pathways, which I don't believe should should ever be a, a part of. Um, a native title because that's not our culture to accept different tribes coming into our land. That, that's bottom line. Um, you cannot come into somebody else's land and you cannot sell or claim their land, claim their rights. The Secretary is also attacking multiple use of the land. Multiple use is a decades-old bedrock principle of federal land management. In March, the Department of Interior released a proposed rule to allow entities to lease federal lands for the purpose, not of use, but of non-use. In other words, the Secretary wants to make non-use a use. She is calling up, down, day, night, black, white, turning federal law on its head. The Secretary is giving radicals a new tool to shut out the public. Remember, environmental radicals don't want the public to have access to public lands. Families and communities in Wyoming and throughout the West depend on access to public lands for grazing, for forest management, for recreation. The Secretary of Interior is aggressively working to take that access away from So we then go on to the Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act, which comes into force next week across Western Australia. And you, are, you believe that that's not going to help your tribe or other tribes. It's going to make the problems of native title even worse. Is that correct? Yes. Um, well, at, at first I supported the changes. I supported the changes hoping that um, there would be some, that it would affect some kind of, um, you know, uh, changes for Aboriginal people to identify the right people who can manage the heritage, like what I'm saying, the right tribes. But because um, it's in the same category as native title, you, you, you brought all these people in, they become the, um, you know, the people who manage this native title um, because it's majority and the same thing is happening with heritage and you're going to be having the same problems about other people selling the, the land that doesn't belong to them. You say that the voice is a threat to Aboriginal communities and organisations. In what way is it a threat? Well, in regard to uh, talking about it in the uh, First Nations people, so currently today I'm a chairman of a mining company, uh, so I can't do anything on my mine site, even if building a toilet, without consulting, discussing, negotiating and coming to an agreement with, uh, with the traditional owners of that country. Now, I'm a great believer, I've always written about this for the last 30 years, I'm a great believer in those First Nations and they are the ones who can speak for country. So, for instance, I'm a Bundjalung man, I can, with my other Bundjalung mm. people, can talk about country. No one else can. Mm. And so that's where I'm coming from in, in that area. Well, so might, what, might I just bring you back to the question, yes. which is your, your, what you said was that the voice 
is a threat to yes. Aboriginal communities and organisations. I want to understand how it could act as a threat to well, organisations and communities. Well, yes. So, so the, it, it, so see, I live in two worlds. One is the legal world and one is the, the real world. Did you find out so far? Well, I think they're gaining insight into how the community feels and what they have to say. And what have you found out so far? Senator, I'm happy to update you as, yeah. as the right. time goes Let me help you out here. So uh, uh, try to get you some information on this. Uh, do, you, do you know how many acres are involved in this? I beg your pardon? Do you know how many acres are involved in this? I don't have the number of acres. 146,000 acres. You consider that a fairly significant piece of uh, real estate? I think 146,000 acres is a large acreage, yes. It is. Um, they're talking about 378 turbines. The smallest ones are just slightly bigger than the Statue of Liberty. The largest turbines are... Have you ever been to Seattle? Yes, sir. Seen the uh, Space Tower? Or, the, excuse me, the Space Needle? I don't think I've seen Space the, Needle. But well, I um, it's, uh, it, it, it's stunning to us that, that you would think of 144,000 acres for 1,000 megawatts. And let me tell you why. We're in, in the next, uh, in the next uh, 40, uh, 24, 36 months, we're going to be turning on three uh, small modular reactors, 36 acres. Sorry, sorry, James. And that takes us to The Voice. So give us your thoughts yep. on The Voice. Well, when you're looking at The Voice, it's, it's, The Voice is not going to change the thing. The Voice is only looking after the city dwellers, not remote communities, because half of the remote people out there don't even know about The Voice. Look, we all... we. We all got our culture, we got our surroundings, that, that's who we are, that's what we are. And that's how we want to live. We want to own what is ours, under what we inherited from our ancestors. And that's pretty much, you know, what Aboriginal people are. And, but most of them are chasing this um, gravy train, you know, that mm. because um, everything's, everything is constituted and they have to be on there, you know. Didn't, uh, I didn't see what Senator Hanson said, uh, but I'm sure it's consistent with things that she said in the past, and I don't intend to respond to them, because I don't think that they're worthy of a Prime Ministerial response. The Minister for Indigenous Australians, Senator Gallagher. Uh, Minister, I know you've had a pretty tough week, so all I just want is a yes or no to this question, if you can, please. Does the Albanese <coughs> Labor government acknowledge the existence of Indigenous identity fraud? Uh, well, firstly, no. The answer to the question is no, we will not support. Secondly, we don't recognise um, uh, identity fraud. Thirdly, um, I don't believe it's up to an individual in this place to decide who gets to, dis to be an Aboriginal person in this country. First Nations people have lived here for over 65,000 years. We should all be really proud of that um, as being uh, sharing the same country as the longest continuing civilisation in this country. And so what I'm talking about there is that once we do those negotiations about extension of a mine or a mining project, we come to an agreement and it goes to the minister uh, in, in Canberra to, to be signed off of the minister of that state. What we have now is that we have third parties who are trying to interfere with that process. Well, all they have to do, instead of going to the traditional owner communities, they can actually go to The Voice and then they can actually talk to The Voice about making re recommending to the minister that they do not sign off on these things. And that's a problem. I believe that, that, that the First Nations, the traditional owners, are a voice and we need to empower those voices rather than building another layer on top. So, The voice is only looking after the city dwellers, not remote communities, because half of the remote people out there don't even know about the voice.